Anterograde amnesia and finding Nemo. Give it to your friend, let's spin. Hey, by looking at me, glancing a kid. Wish your name was dancing a jig here with this handsome kid. Sick a cigar right from people. Has this ever happened to you? You meet someone interesting at a party and get jiggy to the music with them. You want to get to know the person better, so you get their name and make plans to see each other again. Later, you try to recall their information. And then, it's gone. I'm sure you've all felt this before. And then you start doubting your memory skills, telling yourself you've got the worst one in the world. So what is short-term memory? Short-term memory is memory for anything up to 30 seconds. So if that's short-term memory, then what's long-term memory? Long-term memory is memory for anything from 30 seconds to infinity and beyond. The film industry is known to take something that is real and then twist it to support their movie's plot. This is done for entertainment purposes. Point in case, Finding Nemo. In the movie, Dory claims she has short-term memory loss, but in reality, what she actually has is a cognitive phenomenon called anterograde amnesia. Anterograde amnesia is characterized by a loss of memory for events that take place after an accident or the onset of amnesia. A person suffering from anterograde amnesia is unable to store new information in their short-term memory, which if you remember from before is only actually 15 to 30 seconds long. There's also a limit to the amount of information you can store in there. But with long-term memory, you have an unlimited capacity. Neat, right? Dory, do you see anything? Ah! Something's got me! That was me! I'm sorry! <gasps> I see a light. What is it? It's so pretty. I'm feeling happy, which is a big deal for me. I want to touch it. Oh. Ooh. Hey, come back! <laughs> Come on back here. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get I'm you. I'm gonna swim with you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna be your best friend. Good feelings gone. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I gotta find my son, Nee. <laughs> Fish are friends, <laughs> not food. <laughs> Grab shell, dude. Grab more. No hurling on the shell, dude, okay? Just waxed it. Duck! It's not a duck, it's a pelican! Ah! Everybody hold on! Come here, little help, over here. <laughs> Somewhere beyond the sea. How's it going, Bob? You know, I speak whale. Come back! It's just as well, he might be hungry. Don't worry, whales don't eat clownfish, they eat krill. Swim away! Oh, look, Krill! Now watches the ships that move, Dory! So what does the movie get right? Basically, they do get the forgetful nature of anterograde amnesia right. You can see this in the scene when Dory offers to show Marlin which way the boat went. And just a few seconds later, she forgets what she's doing and thinks he's stalking her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm scared now. What? Wait a minute. Stop following me, okay? What are you talking about? You're showing me which way the boat went. A boat? Hey, I've seen a boat. It passed by not too long ago. It, it went, um, this way. It went this way. Follow me. Next is Dory's ability to read English and speak well, without knowing she can at first. Although they can't remember new facts or retain new memories, people afflicted with anterograde amnesia still have the ability to learn new skills such as learning a language or riding a bike. They just can't recall the specific memory of learning these skills. Maybe a different dialect. Now let's talk about what the movie gets wrong. Dory says her memory problem runs in the family. Well, she's definitely misinformed about that because as we mentioned before, this type of amnesia is caused by a trauma to the brain. An injury to the brain, just like an injury to the elbow, can't be genetically passed down. Short-term memory loss. I don't believe this. No, it's true. I forget things almost instantly. It runs in my family. 
Well, I mean, at least I think it does. Next, we must address this business of Dory having an extraordinary ability to remember the full address after a few tries of reading it. This is highly unlikely to happen in real life where interrogate amnesiac suffers. Obviously, this was done to support the movie's storyline. And finally, in this scene, Dory's memory Stop. degrades when she's feeling sad and stressed. Please don't go away. Please. No one's ever stuck with me for so long before. And if you leave, if you leave, I just, I remember things better with you. I do. Look, P. Sherman, 42, 42. <sighs> I remember it. I do. It's there. Generally I, I speaking, it when times of stress you, can have an effect on your ability and to remember I, things. I, I look at you like when your I'm... mind goes blank during an exam after weeks of studying. When it comes to anterograde amnesiac patients, though, stress and emotions should have no impact on their ability to recall recent events because they've lost that ability anyway. At the end of the day, Finding Nemo does show some consistencies and inconsistencies of Dory's condition. However, it also sheds light on the topic of memory loss and has a deep underlying message accomplished with fantastic comedic value and an upbeat, optimistic feeling. She shows us that no matter how challenging life gets, you must always just keep swimming. We hope we've shown you a new side to Dory with a greater understanding of her true condition.